Good morning and welcome to Woodstock Church Hostel. I am Pastor Jason Lumpkin and of course I am here, you are there, and I'm so excited to have you with us this morning as we prepare to worship God, to honor God, and join together in fellowship. As always on our virtual broadcast, we love to start with some praise and worship. So I'm going to ask you now to join in as our praise and worship team leads us this morning. There is no limit to your power. There is no stopping what you plan. You give us faith to move the mountains and hope to dream again. We see the fires of revival, the darkness giving way to light. Let it burn up tonight. Let it burn up tonight. Let the walls come down in Jesus' name. Let the walls be fine in Jesus' name. Let the church of Jerusalem shine your light to the world. Shine your light. Your arms forever undivided. Oh, your sons and daughters one. By the cross we are united. Our hope is in the blood. Our hope is in the blood. Let the walls come down in Jesus' name. Let the walls be fine in Jesus' name. Let the church arise. Shine your light to the world. Shine your light. Oh, be Darkness, you have 
Let us pray. God, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to these, your precious people. God, I pray that you will decrease in me and increase your influence. Let it be none of me and all of you, God. I pray that as I share what you've given me to share this morning, that you will open up the hearts, minds, and ears of those who are watching this online, God. Those who are watching it right now, no matter where they find themselves, God, I believe that you can speak a word behind that word that goes forth, God. Let them hear exactly what they need to hear in this season. Let the words edify and let them be encouraged. But God, I pray that not only will they hear what they need to hear, but I pray that they have courage to act on what they sent you telling them to do. 
So God, as we go into the word this morning, I yield myself into your very capable hands. It's in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Today, we are continuing in our series called Embracing Uncertainty. In this series, I've been encouraging you and myself that we have to lean into the uncertainty that lies before us. We have to lean into the unknown as the road unfolds ahead. And today is no different. Today is going to pick up off the message that we finished with last week, which we'll talk about in a second. And the message that I'm entitling, Wait a Minute. Wait a Minute. So if you have your Bibles, the smart devices, I'm going to ask you to go back to where we were last week. Go back to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 1. So turn with me right now to Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 1. We're going to read down to verses 13. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation today. New Living Translation. But this is Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 13. I hope you have it. If you went to Revelations, you went too far, and it's okay. And it reads as follows. It says, Therefore, since we've been surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, to the life of faith. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten their encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord discipline, disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, Remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who has never been disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we may share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's, while it's happening. It's painful. But afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. So this was the key passage that we uh, read and studied last week in the message entitled Confidence in Finishing. Today we're going back to this passage uh, because at the very end we left something on the table. But here's something interesting here. When we looked at this passage last week, we highlighted the fact that we were told to run our race. We said that each and every one of us had a race before us. And we're told to run our race there. But what was interesting was we had a couple things that we talked about. I mentioned that I believe when we're told to run our race, if there was ever a statement uh, about embracing uncertainty in Scripture, this might be it. Because when we talk about running our race, we're not told how long we're going to run. We're not told how difficult it's going to be or even given the details of the race that's set before us. We're just told to run. There were two additional points last week that we talked about. The first point was we were told to look to Jesus. <sighs> when we talked about looking to Jesus, the first thing we remembered and recognized in the scripture was that when we look to Jesus first, we recognize everything that he endured from sinful people, everything that he went through. And as we look and recognize what he went through and what he endured, it'll help us to be able to keep going and finish our race. The second thing we recognize when it says that we look to Jesus is the fact that in the King James, it said that he was the author and the finisher of our faith. All my Baptist folks say, that's right, Pastor, preach on. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And we talked about the fact that I believe that God in his nature is a finisher and that he's going to finish the work that he started in you and in me. 
We got that when we looked at Philippians 1.6. Like I said, God's going to complete the work that he started in us. And so we use that to encourage us. But then there was one more piece to the puzzle, which was the discipline. Yeah, we talked about discipline last week. How the, the scripture that we just read again said that God's discipline is always good for us. Might not feel good. Might not want it to happen. But it is good. And it reminds us that God loves us, that we are his child. Because it said he only disciplines his children. And so there's an assurity in the fact that we're being disciplined, even though it's not fun. And the church said, amen. So today we're going to go back to what we just read in Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to look at verses 12 and 13 because we talked about the discipline. We talked about the fact that we have to run our race. But there is one more piece here that can't be left out of what we're taking with us as we journey forward. So let's go back to verse 12. So this is Hebrews 12, 12. I'm going to read 12 and 13, and we're going to talk about it. So verse 12 says this. It says, so take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Verse 12 gives this impression of someone who had been running their race with endurance. Look at the advice that's given. It says, take a new grip with your tired hands. It says, and strengthen your weak knees. As we're embracing uncertainty, we must talk about the fact that there are going to be times that we have to wait. There are going to be times where we're going to have to employ uh, or have to endure periods of patience. Because if someone's sitting here advised to take a new grip because their hands are tired, if they're saying, you got to strengthen your weak knees, I'm like, how long they been running? <laughs> okay, I'm joking, but I'm serious. If you think about that, then you have to recognize everything that's going to happen isn't going to happen overnight. Everything that we're, we're called to do, everything that we're going to have to do for God, that we're going to have to go through, won't be a, a microwave. Here it is. It's done today. I asked yesterday. It's done. Everything won't be that way. And I think just as it is important for us to recognize that discipline is going to be a part of our journey, we have to recognize that we're going to have to wait at times. So, so you get the title is wait a minute. You see what I did there? Wait a minute. Like it's almost like you say, well, wait a minute. I didn't know I had to wait. But then almost it's like, no, no, it, it, it's a play on words. You're going to have to wait a minute <laughs> for, for some of the things to take place. You, you see what we did there? OK. Dead jokes abound. <laughs> but think about something though here. When you think about this person with these hands that needs to grip again. This whole uh, imagery that we have of running, I, I started thinking about a marathon. And when you think about a marathon, there's usually more time spent running than there is crossing checkpoints in a marathon, right? You spend more time running than you actually spend crossing a certain checkpoint. Like, okay, there's 26 miles in a marathon, but you're gonna spend, you're, you're gonna, most of that time you're out there, you're running. It's like, oh, I just passed the checkpoint, but I'm still running. <laughs> also, you only finish once that particular race, right? And so most of the time is going, going to be spent running. And so we should not be surprised if there's periods where it feels like we are waiting. Notice that as it says, take a new grip, this implies something that I believe will bless you and bless me. It implies that this person is still holding on to something, although they are tired. In the midst of their journey, they are tired, their knees are, their knees are becoming weak, but there is something that they're still holding on to. And I believe you and I have Jesus to hold on to, even in the midst of tired times, weak times, struggles. In the midst of our journey, as we're running our race, we have something to hold on to. And that's a reason to say amen, but also a reason to keep going. When it says strengthen your weak knees, this statement to me almost sounds illogical. I mean, it doesn't make sense. So uh, if you've ever had bad knees or bad back or know somebody who has, to tell them to just strengthen them seems ridiculous. <laughs> like, so my dad had both of his knees replaced. He had double knee replacement surgery. When he had bone on bone, if I said, hey, strengthen your knees, he probably would have hit me first. Let me just, just put that out there. <laughs> but outside of that, he didn't have the ability to strengthen his knees. And when I see this here telling, them to, telling us uh, to strengthen our knees, I, I believe this statement is meant to remind us that there are times on our journey where we must summon the strength with, from within to keep going. 
Sometimes you say, okay, I've seen my dad before he had his knee surgery where it was bad. It was hurting. And if it's raining, it was worse, that kind of a deal. But sometimes he could gather enough strength, uh, fortitude or something on the inside to be able to push. And I believe in the same way with us, you might be tired. You might be thinking, I'm, I'm just ready to let go. And I want to remind you today that even in those moments, you got to summon something from it within, take a new grip and keep going. Don't let the delays, don't let the frustration, don't let the fact that you're waiting cause you to, to let go, to quit, to cave in. There's something on the inside that's going to rise up, and I need you to, to, to hear that and say, you know what, I'm not going to quit right now, even though I feel like quitting would be easier. <laughs> even though like it would be really, really nice to just go sit down and I have to deal with this and I have to go through the struggle and I have to go through the heartache or, or all of this stuff. No, hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. <sighs> Let me pause and say to you that <sighs> it may be time for you on your journey. I, I know these are sometimes these are like scriptures and they seem like images, but let me just say in real time, I, I don't know where you are on your journey. I don't know what, with what, what you're dealing with right now, but for you personally, it may be time for you to take a new grip with those hands. It may be time for you to say, you know what? It, it's, this, this is my moment to endure. It's my moment to, to push on. It's my moment to keep going. What does it say in uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 10? In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, uh, patient endurance is what you need now. I think it's around 36. Hebrews 10, it says, patient endurance is what you need now. And, and I want to tell you, there are some people that are watching right now that, that, that you're going through something real. This isn't just a, 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 a figurative race. You are running your race and you're like, Pastor, I, I was ready to give up last week. <laughs> I was ready to give up three months ago. But no, hang on. Push. T take a new grip. What did it say? S strengthen your knees, right? Hang on. Remember. We're told to run our, way, our race with endurance. And if we know that God will complete the work that he's begun in us, then I think we have to be mindful or stir ourselves, stir ourselves up in the fact that uh, the things that God has told us, the, the, the places on the road that we're supposed to go, that it will come to pass. But, you know, I don't like you to take my word for it, right? My little LeVar Burton deal. Uh, I want you to go to Scripture because I want to show you something. When I, when I thought about this and I was studying and reading this passage, uh, this might seem left field, but there's this Scripture that just totally just jumped in my spirit. I was like, oh, this is a great connection point. So turn with me to Habakkuk chapter 2 or your table of contents. <laughs> Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. Uh, so turn to Habakkuk chapter 2. Because there's this idea that, okay, I got to strengthen my hands. I got to take a new grip. I got to strengthen my weak knees. But ultimately, the challenge that we have is the fact that we're waiting, right? That, that's, the real, that's the real thing. It's, it's not the fact that I'm holding on because uh, in some respects, the fact that you're holding on means that God's giving you the strength to make it through this season. Amen? We don't even think about that part, right? He's giving you what you need to be able to push through. But really, the issue is that we're waiting. And, and I hope what we're going to read here in Habakkuk is something that will... Um, Offer encouragement, but be something that's a blessing to you, uh, uh, as you as you use this word seed as a little fuel to keep you going. So we're going to be reading Habakkuk 2, verses 2 and 3. All right. Habakkuk 2, verses 2 and 3 from the New King James. And it says this. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So in context, let me explain what's going on here in Habakkuk. So Habakkuk is given this warning from God, a vision. Uh, and the vision, he was literally told to write it down, make it plain on tablets and post it so that people who came by would see the warning and they could run. So that, that's really what happened in this time. And when you look at this, I believe that this scripture so easily connects to what we're talking about in Hebrews 12 with this imagery of us running our race. Again, 
We already had this understanding. We talked about the fact that God's going to complete what he started in our lives. And I believe if we know that God's going to complete it, we have this vision of it, right? We're confident. Like, you know what? God's going to complete what he started in my life. And we're confident in that. But often while we are running, I believe our vision is similar to Habakkuk 2.3. He said, what was Habakkuk 2.3? Well, let's look at it again. Habakkuk 2.3 says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. It says, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Often on our journey, it is critical to remind ourselves that in spite of how long you've been running, how long you've been on the journey, how long you've been down this path, how long you've been at it, that the vision is for an appointed time. Think about that. It said the vision is for an appointed time. The appointed time means that it's going to pass. If it's for an appointed time, that means that some time, some day, it's going to happen, right? That means at some point, I might not know when, you might not know when, it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. We got to have confidence there. But then Habakkuk takes it a step further by saying what? He says, though it tarries, that's a good old Baptist word, right? <laughs> he says, though it tarries, wait for it. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. That's what it says. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. And I say to you, wait for it. It, I love the marathon analogy because if I'm running a marathon and, I, again, I've never, have I driven, I guess I've driven 26, 26 miles, but I've never run, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, who's running, I'm not running 26 miles, but I imagine at some point as you're going, it just seems like it's a long way off, but hopefully what maybe keeps you encouraged while you're running is like, okay, that was 13. Okay. Whew. Now I'm at mile 14. Okay. I know that as I keep going, I'm getting closer. I know that if I keep pushing, if I just keep putting one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, if I just keep doing what I know to do here, eventually I will get there. And I think in the same way, we have to do the same thing. And so here's the tie-in. If it's going to be for an appointed time, if we have to, if it tarries, but it tells us to wait for it, then I'm going to advise you the same thing that we just said before from Hebrews 12. Take a new grip with your hands. Take a new grip with those tired hands. What did it say? We have to push past the opportunities we have to give up, to quit, and to stop running. Let me say that again. We have to push past the opportunities that we have to give up, to quit, and to stop running. Push past it. Push past it. So, <laughs> it's a silly example, but I'm going to use it. Um, I remember some years ago, uh, there was a whole workout craze called P90X. And I remember uh, Cindy and I, we were like, oh, you know, it's not that tough. We can do this. And uh, she and I are very competitive, uh, <laughs> which is just saying it mildly. We are extremely competitive. And we were talking trash about who's going to, you know, who's going to cave in first because we heard how hard it was. So we were in there uh, doing this um, yoga exercise, which was like an hour and a half workout, which we didn't know that till we hit play on the DVD. And not wanting to be bested by my wife, I was like, there's no way I'm going to quit before her. And I'm sitting here, you know, arms shaking, trying to hang on and do whatever. And she's dying too. We were just over there just like struggling to do it. And as we kept going through it, as we kept struggling, it was like, I said, you know what? I'm going to push past every opportunity to quit. Every time it was a new exercise, it was almost like a little voice whispering in my ear like, you know, you just quit. It's all right. And I said, no, I'm not. Again, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to do it. And the further I went, the more tempting it was and I just had to hang in there. I had to push. One, because I just didn't want her to beat me. I mean, let's just say that I don't want her to beat me. But the other part is, with every chance and every temptation there is to quit, you have to remind yourself, why did you start running to begin with? 
you got to remind yourself that there is something, there's a race for you to run and, com and to complete. And that's more important than the fact that you are waiting or that you want to quit. And, and, and can, I, can I say something else to you? I've learned often in our journey that what God does while we're waiting <laughs> is more important often than the fact that you and I are waiting. The thing that God is doing in your life while you're waiting is more important than the fact that you are waiting. And what we often can't see is the fact that while we feel like we're waiting, something is happening in us because in this example, we're still running. We're still moving. Might not feel like it. Might not feel like you're making progress. Might not feel like you're, you're getting to where you need to go, but you are. And you have to remember that. You have to be encouraged by that. And you have to trust God as you take these steps forward. One more thing here. If you look at the passage back in verse three, it looks like double talk <laughs> because that last line, it says uh, it says, though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will surely come. And then it says it will not tarry, which I'm like, wait, didn't you just say it's going to tarry. But then you came back and said, but it will not tarry. And you know what? I believe this is saying to us here. The, the sentence before said the vision was for an appointed time. And so think of this. If I have a vision, if I have something that's supposed to happen on a certain day at an appointed time, unless it doesn't happen on that day, it tarried, right? So the reality is the vision that you have, the thing that God's told you to do, the, the part of the race that you're running, the things are going to happen when they're supposed to happen. And the only way it tarries is really our perspective because we're tired of waiting. But it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. It's not tarrying, really. It just feels that way to you and to I. And so since it feels that way to us, we got to push. Since it feels that way to us, we got to keep going. Since it feels that way to us, I'm going to encourage you again. What was it? Oh, yeah. Take a new grip with those tired hands and strengthen those weak knees. Then there's this. So, so I'm going to do what I did last time. Let's go back to Hebrews 12 one more again. I said one more again. <laughs> Once again, let's go back to Hebrews 12. Let's go back to Hebrews 12. In Hebrews 12, I want to now read verse 13 again, because there's one other piece that we have to now add to this. So Hebrews 12, verse 13, this is where we started or this is where we ended the first uh, opening section here. Hebrews 12, verse 13, New Living Translation says this. It says, mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. This is such a hopeful statement, but it is so strange. <laughs> Listen to this again. It says, mark out a straight path for your feet. So that sounds good. OK, we're marking out a straight path. We're hopeful, right? But it says, so that those who are weak and lame will not fall, but become strong. And at first glance, it makes no sense. How can those who are weak and lame run, not fall, but also become strong? One could argue upon first glance, you say, well, pastor, here's what it is. If they start running over time, they build their strength. And so... Maybe that's how they become strong. But if someone's lame, right, I don't think that's the case. And I really think that there's something else at play here that we cannot miss. Go to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. And you know I am setting you up here. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28. Uh, we're going to read verses 28 through 31. I got the New King James here. So Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Oh, man, this is this is some good stuff here. This is like the tweetable stuff here. OK, <laughs> Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40 right here says this. Uh, 40, 28, it says, have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. Twenty nine. He gives power to the weak and to those who have might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men, young men shall utterly fall. But here it is. But those who wait on the Lord 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Ah, <sighs> here we go. Here we go. Check this out. Two things here. All of us in some place in our life can be described as faint and weary. Look at this, faint and weary. E each and every one of us can some way be described as that. And our God, it says in the verse, says God is never faint nor weary. Also that he can give power to the weak and increase strength to those with no might. I bring this up first because we have to ask ourselves this question. When was the last time you asked God to renew your strength for the journey ahead? See, it's not enough to say, well, my God has power to renew our strength. He has a power to help those who have no might. He has power to renew strength to help us finish. But if we don't ask for help, are we struggling alone while God is sitting there ready to help you? And, and I, you know, I like to give you scripture on that. James 4, 2 says we have not because we ask not. And so I have to ask you, have you asked God in the midst of having those tired hands and weak knees? Say, God, restore. God, renew strength. God, I'm struggling right now in this area. I need your help. God's ready, has the ability specifically to help in that area for you. So I'm not asking you to renew your strength in your own uh, willpower. I'm asking you to trust the God of the universe who has all power to be able to help you. To be able to assist right where you are right now and to trust him that he will do it. That's what we're talking about. When I think about Hebrews 12, God is that one who can strengthen and renew us all for the journey ahead. However, you know, at church, we like to talk about the scripture, right? <laughs> I mean, this is one of my favorite songs, Fred Hammond, you know, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Right, there, there's, there's, this is one of those things, right? They'll mount up on wings as eagles. They'll, they'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. And, 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 you know, every Baptist preacher has probably preached from this passage in this text. But we must make sure that although we're excited about having renewed strength, we're excited about being able to change our condition and to be able to run on, there's one qualification there that can't be ignored. It says those that wait on the Lord. And, and be careful about wait there. That word wait there is, if you do a deeper study, it's really talking about this idea that those who have hoped in, that Hebrew word there, or are trusted. And so what it's really saying is, it's yes, it's wait, but it's those who will trust in God. Those who will trust in God will find themselves with renewed strength. Those who trust in God uh, will run and not get weary, right? Those who trust in God will walk and not faint. It's about trusting in God. And I would argue, here's the tie in. We can wait a minute. We can wait on God because we trust God. If you truly trust God, then we can wait on God's timing and trust that even if it doesn't make sense to me, even if it doesn't make sense to you, that I know God's timing is good. I know God's timing is sure even if I thought it should happen by now, even if I feel like, God, why is it taking so long? Why did the road take this turn? Why did this unexpected thing happen that I didn't think was going to happen, happen? And now we find ourselves in a place of being tired. Now we find ourselves in a place of being weary. And the good news in the text today is outside of the discipline, right? We talked about discipline last week. We talked about God finishing up, helping to finish the work that he started in us, and all of that is still true. But there is still good news to know that when we're tired, when we're weak, he can help us to be strong. When we're feeling like we can't go any further, our strength can be renewed. When we feel as if, God, this is too much, Scripture reminds us that he's not going to put more on us than we can bear. And so I am encouraging you, as I encourage myself, to keep going. To push through and, and once again, embrace uncertainty. Because we embrace uncertainty this time because 
no matter my condition, God is able to restore. He was able to renew my strength and he is able to help us endure in ways that maybe we didn't see at the beginning. In ways that maybe you only find out as you take the journey and find yourself running out of gas. Find yourself in places where you're like, man, I, I just don't know. We can trust our God to come through. And we can trust our God to help us along our journey. And so now, I simply ask you this. If you are here today and you find yourself on the journey somewhere between starting and finishing and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, now's the time for you to do that. See, the thing about making Jesus Lord of your life, first is this access to heaven, right? The fact that when you die, because we are all going to die, right? I mean, you talk about having an appointed time, like in the, the, the scripture we read, every person has a time that they're going to die. And the one thing we have to get right in this life is to make sure that we've made Jesus Lord of our life before that happens. And so if you haven't done that, you have to do that. You have to do that. I say this every week and I will say this continually, that heaven is a real place. Hell is a real place. And when you die, you're going to go to one of those places. When I die, I'm going to go to one of those places. And what we believe is by believing in Jesus. And this is what it means when we talk about believing in Jesus. Romans 10, 9 and 10, we believe that Jesus really did live, that Jesus really did die on the cross. He was buried for three days. He rose again and is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And by believing that in our hearts, confessing that with our mouth, we are born again. That's what we get out of Scripture, right? And what I'm saying to you is, don't believe other people who are telling you something different. When I tell you this and, and make this offer to you, this isn't about church. This isn't about religion. This is about a relationship that you have to get this one right. You may never come to our church. I may, you may be somebody who just happened to be passing by somehow randomly on YouTube or Facebook or something like that, but you have to make this decision because what I know is, even in the simplicity of you having to be on social media, the fact that you're seeing this message, and if you hadn't made this decision, I am talking to you. Now is the time to make this decision. When you die, you don't become an angel. That's not true. I don't mean to hurt people's feelings or whatever when I say that. I just want to be honest. I love you enough to tell you the truth. That's not true. We don't become angels. You go to heaven or you go to hell. And we all have this opportunity to accept the free gift that Jesus sacrificed for so we can go to heaven. So that's the first part, but there's so much more. This whole idea of running our race isn't just about making it to heaven. It's about while we're here, the time that we've been given, making sure that we maximize this time and utilize it to impact other people for the gospel. But it starts with you making that decision. It starts with you and I saying, you know what, I realize I don't have enough willpower to save myself. I don't have what it takes to save myself. But in believing in Jesus, I can receive what he's done. We can't do enough goody goody things to get us into heaven, but we're saved to do good works. <laughs> that, that's kind of how it works. And so if you're watching right now, you need to make a decision for Jesus. You need to get saved. I'm gonna ask you to do something crazy, which is really not that crazy. I'm gonna ask you to comment down below in the chat box. Say, hey, I want to get saved. Hey, I'd like to have some more information. Hey, I'd like to talk to somebody. Comment down below. Somebody from our team, they're watching the, the YouTube box. They're watching the Facebook uh, boxes, the chat boxes down below. Uh, they're going to comment, and, and we'll connect with you. And I'm telling you, if you need to get saved, don't miss this moment and this opportunity. It's that important. Second is for those who you say, well, hey, Pastor, I made that decision, right? I, I'm born again. But, but if we're honest, right, going to be honest, you'll say, you know what? I'm just not living the life that I should be living right now. I'm really not doing the things that I know God's called me to do. And if that is you, here's what I'm going to say. God's not mad at you. I know I'm supposed to be a fire and brimstone type preacher or something, right? I'm supposed to yell at you and make you feel bad and all of that stuff. Uh, guilt and condemnation does a good job of that by itself. And the good news is when Jesus died on the cross, the same one we were just talking about, he took care of all of our sins. And so for you, if you've already been born again, you need to repent. 
turn away from it, and let's keep going. I often use the analogy of a GPS where if I'm driving down the street and the GPS says, Get, keep going straight, but I turn and I go in different directions or whatever, I can do that. I can go wherever I want to go. And I found that my GPS doesn't yell at me, right? <laughs> the, little, the little person on the phone doesn't yell at me, but what it says is like, hey, it just recalculates based on where I am now to try the course to get me to where I need to go. In the same way, I believe that God's not going to yell at you. He's like, let's just try the course to get you to where you need to go. Now, do we have to deal with the consequences of our sin, our bad decisions and everything else? Absolutely. That, that's just how it works. But the good news is God in his infinite wisdom has planned ahead. He knew you'd be here, but he also knew how far you can go. And so if you need to, you need to pray a prayer of rededication, we'd love to pray that prayer with you. Comment down below. Say, hey, I want, I want to rededicate. Again, you can say, hey, I, I got a question. I want to talk to somebody. Whatever it is, we would love, love to walk you through that process because it is important. Don't stay stuck. God didn't create you to stay stuck. And if you feel that way or like I, like I heard people say, oh, well, Pastor, I've did so much, I can't pray. It's foolishness. That's a lie from the enemy. Don't stay there. Keep going. Next is prayer. If you need prayer for anything, there is no prayer too small. There's no prayer request too large. We would love, love to pray with you. One thing I get the benefit of doing is pastoring a praying church. We really do pray for people, seriously. And if you need prayer for something, we never take for granted that people have folks around them that will pray for them. So if you need prayer for something, I'm going to ask you right now that you comment down below. Let us know. You can give. You can be as specific as you want. Say, hey, I need prayer for blah, 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 blah. Or you can just say, hey, I just need prayer. And we're going to pray for you. And one of the things we love to do is we like to hit the little like button when you ask for a prayer request down there. But know that if you need prayer, there, there's a group of people over here in Austell that will pray for you. So don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't fail to put the prayer request in there if you need prayer. Also, if you feel led to sow financially into our church and our ministry, uh, recognize that that money doesn't come to me. It literally goes to our church and the work that we do in our community and beyond. And so there's two ways you can give safely and securely from right where you are right now. One is by texting the word give to this. You see it right here, the 678 number down below. You can, you can type give and just send a text right there. Give online safely and securely. Also, the second way is you can go to this little the URL. It's tinyurl.com slash WCA giving. WCA giving. You can give right there um, safely and securely. And I always like to take the opportunity to say we are so thankful uh, for our members, our friends, our partners who continue uh, to sow generously as they honor God um, in their giving. It is an amazing thing to pastor folks uh, who honor God with their finances. And so I love to just take the time to just say thank you because it, it means a lot. They're not doing it for me. They're doing it to honor God. But it's a huge deal um, to see people uh, doing that. Next is this. I have a couple of quick announcements. One is on September 11th. September 11th, Friday, September 11th, from 7 to 8 p.m., we are having a, a, a game night, a virtual game night for the entire church and, and our, our, our friends and our serial visitors, everyone who, who's a part, but it's going to be on Zoom. And so if you're interested in being a part of that, uh, I'm going to ask you to either you can comment down below here or you can send, uh, send an email to uh, info at fbostel.org. Um, so info at fbostel.org. You can send an email there or you can comment down below if you don't receive the emails and we can make sure you're included and get the info because it won't be a Facebook Live. We want to be able to control the group and mute and do all this stuff. We have a, a bunch of fun planned for that night. And so we would love, love to see you there. And it is family friendly, so don't worry. Uh, look, I was going to say if a church had an event that wasn't family friendly, it might be a little concerning, I guess. <laughs> but this is a family friendly event and we're going to have a lot of laughs, a lot of memories that night. And so we're looking forward to having you there with us. Finally, we have a couple of positions that are open as well. Um, one, we have two ministry intern positions. So if you know either seminary students or somebody who's interested in a ministry, a ministry intern position, we have a couple of positions open for that. Um, you can contact the church for more details. Also, we have a position, a worship leader position that is wide open right now. Um, and more details will be coming about coming from that very, very soon, as well as uh, a next gen director, which works with middle school to high school students. So we're super excited about that, getting the word out and you'll see job descriptions and all that upcoming very, very soon. And so we're very, very excited about uh, as we continue to grow and take steps forward in this community to do more and reach more people. So before we go, here's the thing. 
we will be together again next week or this week on Wednesday night. So Wednesday, we do a Facebook Live Bible study. Oh man, if you hadn't joined us on Wednesday, you are missing out. It is great. We chat, we interact, and we talk and have a great, great time. So we're looking forward to have you with us on Wednesday on Facebook Live on the Woodstock Church Hostel Facebook page. So you can go there and see us there. Also, uh, we'll be back together here next Sunday. Also, know that uh, all of our archive messages, you can go to YouTube and search Woodstock Church Hostel, uh, or you can search Jason Lumpkin and see them there. So now, let us pray. God, thank you for this opportunity for what you've done today. I'm thankful, God, that, that in the simplicity of me sharing words, you've done God's stuff. You've impacted, you've, you've given us what we needed to hear, God. I pray, God, that as we go forward this week, God, give us opportunities to take new grips with our tired hands, to strengthen our knees, to come to you and ask for help, to renew our strength at times where we find ourselves weary. I'm thankful, God, that, that you can renew many areas in our lives, God. And so we ask collectively, God, to help us, renew us, restore us, so that we can keep going and finish our race, God. We're thankful, God, that, that as we uh, uh, continue to go on our journey, as we continue to chase after you, as we continue to do all that you've called us to do, that you're right there with us, that you're right there with us, that, that you hadn't left us, that as we uh, see and experience and feel your hand on of us, on us, and as we see you uh, uh, guiding us along the way, that we'll be confident that we're not by ourselves, that we won't yield to the temptation to quit, that we won't give up. And I'm thankful, God, that you'll continue to keep us safe, we just continue to thank you, God, for, for the healing and recovery uh, of our members, our friends and family uh, that are dealing with illnesses, that are dealing with issues, and that are, 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 are working their way towards full recovery and restoration, God. And I'm thankful, God, that you will bring us all here safely at our next meeting, our next appointed time to be together. I thank you for what you do. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you will, what you will continue to do. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. And all that agree with that, say amen. All right, guys, we will see y'all next time. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing week. And know that you're going to make it.